here we go again. Facundo Palistri will soon know exactly where he stands at Manchester United. Man United have few options for the right flank against Brighton, but Facundo Palistri still isn't guaranteed a start. United are back in action on Saturday, and for once the struggles on the field will come as a nice distraction to the chaos off it. United have had to release more club statements over the international break than they've had wins so far this season, and the positive atmosphere Eric Ten Hag built up over his first year in charge is coming under peril. The last thing they need is a matchup against Brighton, a team they have lost their last three Premier League meetings to buy a score of 7-1. Playing the high-flying seagulls is hard enough at the best of times, but when United are low on confidence after an underwhelming start to the season and appear to be engulfed in disarray, it becomes even harder, especially when there are hardly any right-wingers to call upon. Antony is unavailable as he is on a leave of absence after facing allegations of abuse from three women in Brazil. Jaden Sancho has been frozen out of the first team after publicly calling out Ten Hag. The manager said after the defeat to Arsenal that Sancho was left at home due to his poor performances in training, which the winger hit back against and denied in a now-deleted tweet. Talks between the pair this week did not resolve the issue, so Sancho is unavailable indefinitely. That leaves Facundo Pellistri as the only senior right-wing option available as Ahmad Diallo remains sidelined. But labelling the Uruguayan as senior is a stretch given he is yet to start a Premier League game and has made just 12 appearances for United in three years. Despite showing promise in those rare cameos, Ten Hag has been reluctant to give Palistri any significant or meaningful opportunities to prove himself. If that doesn't change on Saturday, then it never will. As well as Anthony, Sancho, and Ahmad being out, Mason Mount is also unavailable due to injury. Though a central player, he was a viable option for the right flank given Ten Hag wants the former Chelsea man to press high up the pitch. United have struggled with Mount in a double pivot as a result of his pressing, with Casemiro repeatedly being left to fend for himself. With Christian Eriksen alongside the Brazilian instead of Mount, United had their most secure and compact performance of the season against Arsenal, again and again. Eric Ten Hag is saving Manchester United from themselves. Man United must remember the predicament they found themselves in prior to Eric Ten Hag's arrival from Ajax. Eric Ten Hag's opening year and a half at Manchester United could have gone a lot more smoothly than it has. For United supporters, it must be difficult not to get yourself down when it appears each month throws up another controversy between a player and manager. The first and most high profile instance of this happening came in November 2022, when Cristiano Ronaldo took it upon himself to air his grievances to Piers Morgan in front of TV cameras. It was a major first test for Ten Hag's strength in his position, and he passed with flying colors cutting ties with Ronaldo soon after the full interview went live. In the months which have followed, we have seen the Dutchman continue to lay down the law. These range from the relatively minor disciplinary issue for Marcus Rashford after he was late for a team meeting to what we are currently seeing unfold with Jadon Sancho. Now, we will all have our own opinions on whether we would have gone out in a press conference and openly called out the winger's performances in training. It is perfectly valid to think this was a harsh overreaction from Ten Hag, who should have perhaps kept the matter behind closed doors. But it is also right to remember the predicament the Reds found themselves in prior to the boss's arrival. Under Ralph Rangnick, all sense of authority had gone firmly out of the window as players clearly turned on the interim manager as soon as it became obvious he would not be appointed full-time. The mocking of United staff members to the press was entirely out of order and was a sad indictment of where the club was at. No surprise, then, that Ten Hag was told by United to bring strict standards back to the dressing room. Strict line is the point. The club asked me because there was a no-good culture before last season to set some standards, and that's what I did. It's my job to control the standards, he explained prior to the weekend's clash with Brighton. Of course, it's never someone when they make one mistake. It's a whole process before you come to a certain outcome about strict lines. 
if staff, players, or whatever, who, if there's a structure to cross lines, you have to be strong. Absolutely. Sancho's situation with Ten Hag was building long before the post-Arsenal drama, again and again. Former Man United defender Rio Ferdinand, speaking to BBC Radio 5, live about Jadon Sancho's future at the club. I think it's a sticky situation for everyone at the club. Another saga. The club's been in the news for the wrong reasons. For the last couple of years, it's one thing after another. My big thing with this is, things like this can be done behind closed doors. The manager went public with it. If he wants to keep a player engaged, it's different. We've seen in the past managers. Jose Mourinho called out Lucas Shaw and Shaw responds after Mourinho has left. I think the manager going public. What was his reasons why? Has he exhausted every other avenue to try and get the best from Sancho and thought, this is my last resort. If I get the response I want, we could have a 90-meter player at his top level. Jaden has not been happy with how things have been dealt with. I just don't see the situation ending where we see Sancho playing. If he doesn't apologize, that is what we are led to believe the manager wants him to apologize. If Jaden doesn't apologize, then he doesn't play. Simple as that. We don't know all the details. There may be things we are not privy to that mean the manager wants an apology. If I was in this situation and a manager called me out, my first thought would be to ram it down his throat by going in and working hard and making him understand I am a top player. Meanwhile, former Premier League midfielder Michael Brown tells the football news show that the squad issues United manager Eric Ten Hag is facing at the moment are likely to get better if results improve. So, Eric Ten Hag has been speaking to the media before Manchester United's Premier League encounter with Brighton today, Saturday. Here are the main lines from his news conference. Ten Hag opted not to address Jadon Sancho's absence directly. However, he did say this. It has never been when someone makes one mistake. It is a whole process before you come to a certain outcome. On why he was brought to Old Trafford. Strict lines is what the club asked me to sort because there was no good culture before last season. To set some good standards? That is what I did. That is my job, to control the standards. If staff, players, or whoever cross lines, you have to be strong. Absolutely. On the criticism of Harry Maguire, I have said many times it is disrespectful. He doesn't deserve it. He is a great player and gives great performances. Harry has to block this by performances. Ten Hag confirmed Lissandro Martinez and Victor Lindelof are fit to face Brighton, but Rafael Varane and Mason Mount will both miss out. Asked when Anthony will return, having chosen to delay coming back to the club while he addresses domestic abuse allegations made against him, Ten Hag replied, No idea. Again and again. Manchester United manager Ten Hag claims Sofian Amrabat can play in four different roles. Sofian Amrabat will not make his Man United debut this weekend after his arrival on transfer deadline day. United completed the deadline day arrival of Amrabat from Fiorentina on a season-long loan for $10 million, with the option to sign the Morocco International for $25 million. Despite doubts among some members of United's recruitment staff, the club eventually backed Ten Hag with the addition of a player he coached at FC Utrecht between 2015-17. Amrabat, 27, was recruited primarily as a defensive midfielder, so United had a second specialist after Casemiro, who missed eight games last season through suspension. Ten Hag confirmed Amrabat is out of the Premier League visit of Brighton today, Saturday, after he withdrew from the Morocco squad but expanded on the options he offers the squad. Not today because he is not available, Ten Hag said. But what we missed in our squad was behind Casemiro, another one, typical holding midfielder. So with him, we have one. You see the overload on games, so we need a type. But also, Amrabat can play alongside Casemiro because he is also capable to play in a higher position on the pitch. Also, he can play as a wingback or fullback. Ten Hag also downplayed United's right-hand side issues after the club announced Antony would take an indefinite leave of absence amid investigations in Brazil and by Greater Manchester Police into allegations of assault.
Jaden Sancho has been banished from first-team training. Ahmad is recovering from a knee injury. Mason Greenwood is on loan at Getafe and will not play for United again, while Facundo Palistri has only started once for the club in three years. Captain Bruno Fernandes shifted to the right a number of times last season and could be relocated there for the fixture with Brighton. I think we constructed the squad smart. We have many options there, so I don't worry about that, Ten Hag shrugged. We have options to play there, elsewhere. Paul Merson says Manchester United need to stop hiding behind the Glazers' situation and has called on the players to stand up and be counted as they prepare to host Brighton in a crucial Premier League clash at Old Trafford today, Saturday. Manchester United are down in 11th, six points behind Premier League leader and neighbors Manchester City after an up-and-down start to the season.